2.1 basic sequence. All right. From now on, we'll be introducing some mathematical notation and some math formula. That's what we're going to do here. But remember, we are going to look at this math through the eyes of an engineer, because we are engineer. So we're looking at it from the engineer's point of view. Unit sample sequence. Delta n is equal to 1. When n is equal to 0, n is 0 otherwise, OK? So if we draw the picture, it's going to be like this. 0, 1, 2, minus 1, minus 2, it's going to be like this. It's 0 everywhere except at time equal to 0. It's equal to 1. This is a unit sample sequence, OK? Do we have something like this in continuous time? It's only non-zero at one point and zero everywhere else. Is there such a signal in continuous time? Impulse, yes, thank you very much. In continuous time, we would have an impulse. It's only non-zero at the zero, at time equal to zero, and to zero everywhere else. This is delta n, and here's a, a c. And then we may shift the impulse around, right? The, the non-zero sample may not be at zero, it may be somewhere else. So let's say it's here. What would this be? How is it related to the unit sample sequence? Well, this one, we also call it impulse. It's a discrete time impulse. 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 OK. How is it related to the impulse, this is signal? How can we describe it mathematically in terms of impulse? This would be a shift, shift to the left. So I should write down delta n minus 1. Thank you. All right. So, and I also may shift it to the left, right? So, this is 0, this is a minus 1, and delta n plus 1. Right? Okay. Very good. Hmm. So, these are shifts, right? Shift. In mathematics, we call them shift. But, um, but these shifts have meaning, right? Shift to the right, shift to the left different meaning. Okay. Which one do you think is a delay version of the impulse? Shift to the right. A shift to the right is a delay. This is a delayed. Delta n minus 1 is a delay version of delta n. Very good. Why is it a delay? Why is it a delay? Why do we say it's a delay? Well, actually, this one we say is a delay, and the other one we say is an advance. This is a delay, and this is an advance. Why is it a delay, and why is it an advance? Because at, for this impulse, the signal coming when time is equal to zero, right? So just imagine that you are a person waiting for a signal, okay? So you wait to starting at time equal to minus 2 to still 0, at time equal to minus 1 to still 0, and at time is equal to 0, you see boom, you see a signal coming, right? And after that, it's all 0 again. And, but for this one, you wait here at time equal to minus 1, uh, at time equal to minus 2, 0, at time equal to minus 1, 0, my, at time equal to zero, which is, there's still no signal, and you wait here, at time equal to one, the signal comes. So it's a delay. And for this one, we say it's the opposite of delay, so we say it's an advance. Okay. And uh, we also have a name, unit step, sequence. For almost every signal that we discuss in class, 
But almost everything that we discuss in class, it always comes with a picture. Okay? And a picture is really a very good way of understanding the whole thing. So when you try to um, put those mathematical formulas together in um, together, it's always have a it's always a good idea to have a picture, to think of it in a picture way. Okay, and for this one, it's zero, one, two, three, four, and like this. And this one, and very, very important, let me keep, remind you, this is a discrete time sequence. Do not, do not draw, draw it like this. Do not draw it like this. Okay, right? And then we also have exponential sequence. Xn, that is of the form A alpha n. Let's consider an example. For example, um, xn is equal to an, 0.5n, okay, for n greater or equal to 0. So, then we would have picture like this, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. At 1, you will be half, and at 2, this is n, this is xn. This is one, and that will be half. At n equal to two, it will be a quarter, and then an eighth, and sixteenth, and so on and so forth. Okay, that's an exponential sequence. Okay. And then we may also have a um, complex exponential. For example, complex exponential. For example, um, omega 0 is equal to pi over 4, and xn is equal to cosine pi over 4 n plus j sine pi over 4 n. All right, how do we draw up this picture? How do we draw a picture like this? Draw a comp if we want to draw a complex exponential, it's complex, right? How do we draw it? If you want to show a picture of complex value to someone, how should we do that? It's complex, right? 3D, oh yes, that's a good idea. 3D, huh? 3D, how do we do that? Usually with a function of f of x, y, then we can do a 3D, right? So we would have x is one dimension, y in another dimension, and the third dimension would be the value of f of, n, of x and y, right? So if we have two arguments, then we can draw the picture in 3D. Um, here, the situation is a little bit different. We have one n, right? We just have one axis of n, but on each, for, we want to represent the value in two dimensions, right? Well, you must have seen picture of a plots of signals in, that are complex. How are they usually drawn in textbook? You are seeing something complex, right? How is it usually drawn? For example, Fourier transform, they are usually complex, right? And there are pictures of Fourier transform, plots of Fourier transform in books, right? How do they do it? Yes. Fen kai hua. It's a real part in imaginary parma. Yes, thank you. That's what we can do. How does how we can do it? So we draw the code, the real part, and we draw the the imaginary part. And this is a cosine of sequence. So don't draw a cosine like this, okay? Because that's not a discrete sequence. This is a cosine, and like this, like this. Like this, like this, and this. That's the cosine sequence. This is one. Okay? And for sine, we can do something similar. So we draw them separately. And I've only drawn to the seven 
seventh sample. Why do I draw it to the seventh sample? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Any particular reason that I'm drawing only up to seven? Yes, it's periodic. So I only draw a period. And you can fill in the part for the imaginary part, fine. All right, so let me write down what you just said, periodic signal, okay? Definition, a sequence Xn is periodic if Xn is equal to Xn plus n for some integer n. If it repeats every n sample, then we say it's periodic. And the period is equal to n. Now let me ask you a question. Any question here? No? Okay, let me ask a question. Suppose we have a signal like this. Okay, a complex exponential, right? Is it always periodic? Is it a periodic signal? Okay. Um, well, think about it. We may talk about it. Um, tell me what you think next time.